Welcome to Geek Illustrated, where we share the geek side of comics, games, and film. I'm Philly, and today I'm bringing you my thoughts on This Week in Geek. Venom is now out, and despite the negative Twitter bots with a lousy score on Rotten Tomatoes, what are people saying? Well, crowd response seems to be mostly good overall. Yes, there are flaws, but nowhere near the dumpster fire that critics are making it out to be. People are saying there's flaws in the script, but overall they're entertained. And if any of you were true comic fans of Venom from the beginning, you pretty much expected that once you saw there was A, no Spider-Man, or B, the iconic white logo on his chest. But don't let a few set your expectations. Form your own opinions and go and see it for yourself. Most are saying it was still thoroughly entertained even though it had its flaws. So I am going in with low expectations, but I expect to be visually entertained. And I think that's the best we can hope for. Since just from visuals alone, this is better than the last film we got, so that's already a win for me. Now keeping it Marvel. Most of us have seen the set photos of the first unofficial look of Mysterio and Spidey, which he looks to be rocking what most are calling a stealth suit made by S.H.I.E.L.D. Speculation and theories have been running wild. Did Nick Fury make this suit? Is this the MCU version of the Noir suit? Time will tell, but I'm open to being surprised. And speaking of being surprised, what do y'all think of set leaks like this. Do they take some of the magic out of it? There's no longer a list of things to be shocked about. We are essentially in a spoiler culture where we demand teasers and then say they gave away too much in the trailer. I liked it before when you went into a movie blind, had no idea what to expect, what things would look like until you actually physically saw it. I mean, at least that's my thoughts on it. We'll love to know yours down below. Next, we have a new promo trailer for Daredevil Season 3. We finally got a little bit of backstory to Bullseye. And I have been waiting for this from the beginning. I am stoked. I feel he's one of the most iconic Daredevil villains. And I can't wait to see what they do with him. Just from this alone, him rocking the suit, pretending to be Daredevil, while the King King sets his plans in motion. I'm there for it. Sign me up. I can't wait till it comes out. I think this will go to show once again why Daredevil is the best put together show out of the Marvel Netflix lineup. And then next, Harley Quinn has an animated show coming up. They released a teaser. It didn't give too much. We got a glimpse of the art style. No complaints there. Harley's voice sounds good, sounds on point. I have no complaints there as well. It's a little meta. They broke the fourth wall and they beat you to the punch. They told you you're gonna hate it. Which I feel conflicted because now I'm like, you know what? No, I'm gonna give it a serious go. I'm gonna check you out and see what you're about. But so far, other than that, teaser was not enough to form a good, solid opinion on it and I'm have to see more before I say anything else. But my curiosity is peaked. Next up, we got the third trailer for Aquaman, and my hype meter is starting to rise. The ability to captivate with almost 25 seconds of a chase scene, Aquaman getting his comic accurate version of the costume, and sweet lord have mercy Mera. Mm -mm. I just hope this will be a DC movie to help mend the universe. But in other trailer news, Dragon Ball Super The Broly Movie released another trailer this week and gave us a deeper look into Saiyan lore. Although it looks like a little bit of retcon will take place, but only in minor areas. We finally get to see both of Goku's parents on screen for the first time. We also see King Vegeta, and the first time that he has to bow down to the Frieza family. And possibly, we get to see the pivotal moment when all Saiyans are forced to come back to home planet shortly before it's doomed. And if 
you didn't ask for it, but you're getting it anyway, you get to see Frieza topless, which is kind of weird looking. It makes you think, did they design the armor to look like his chest? Are the Frieza family that narcissistic? Are they sociopaths? Find out this and more in my new docu-series, Mind of Frieza. I'm just messing with you. But that'll do it for today. Comment below on any of today's topics. I would love to see your thoughts on them. If you're new and you like what we do, hit subscribe and the bell and grow the geek empire. Till the next one, stay ill, geeks.